Uh, greetings and good day, everyone. Mark Wolf with Emergency Reporting here. Um, welcome to Virtual Thursday 2018, number 18 for the year. And we're going to jump right into things. And today our topic is uh, safety analytics. And uh, we're going to review that with you today and uh, give you a thorough discussion of it. A few things we're going to mention in just a minute about safety analytics. Um, today I have online with me. Todd Lambert, one of our regional trainers, um, and Alan Miller was supposed to be in, but he must uh, have been detained. So we have Michael Fabian's going to sit in with us for a little while today. Um, I want to mention a few things, uh, as we always try to do. We do have training opportunities for you. Our virtual Thursdays, they're free. Um, we typically have them on the first and third Thursdays at 1100 hours Pacific time. We do offer online training in three hour blocks and we can customize those to meet your needs. We do perform on-site trainings, uh, typically anywhere from two to five days, depending on what you need for your organization. And uh, we do provide regional training academies. We do have a few of them scheduled that we can uh, talk about. Uh, the first will be in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, February 12th through the 14th. Then we have one upcoming in Dallas, Texas, April 9th through 11th. And then the other one scheduled for the year so far is in Anaheim, California, May 14th through 16th. I want to give a shout out to a few folks that I, I noted their names uh, on it that I personally know. Uh, first is John Long Longacre, Lieutenant John Longacre from the Villages Public Safety down in Florida. How you doing today, Lieutenant? And Tom Lewis, formerly of the training department, now works over in our sales team um, area. I see he's listening in today. So hi, Tom. Hope everything is going well with you down in Arizona today. Okay, so um, we are into the safety analytics module. As you can see, it's represented by some gauges here. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Um, safety analytics is an upgradable program for you. Every account you know, comes with gauges one and five. Let me scroll down a bit for you. Um, gauge one is organization, which we'll talk about that in just a moment. And gave, gauge five is wellness behavior. So every account does come with those two gauges. The other gauges in the top row, gauges two, three, and four, is an upgrade. And then on the bottom, here we have gauges five through 10, or six through 10, excuse me. Those are an upgrade as well. If you're interested in uh, safety analytics beyond uh, gauges one and five, please contact your sales rep and they can uh, hook you up with a, a quote to get that added to your account. And as we're going through the discussion today, uh, why I have my wingmen out there, Todd and, and Michael, they're going to monitor our questions. Um, so if anybody has any questions about what we're going over today, please feel free to post that in there and uh, we will get to it as we're going through the discussion today. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start marching through the gauges and, and talking about them. Um, when they designed this, the uh, thought was we'll represent the compliance with NFPA 1500 and uh, represented by gauges as we're in the fire service. We all know what pump gauges are. We understand um, what they mean and uh, the way we have them color coded there when it moves down into the red through black it means you're not in compliance. And if you go all the way up into the green as you're uh, attaining better compliance, which can be achieved up to 100%. The top gauge is our like our master pump gauge, and that is our overall compliance measurement gauge for this particular account, which my disclaimer is this is a training account and it gets beat up a little bit. And there may be some data in here that isn't being reflected correctly, as would be in a uh, fire department that is working and striving towards 1500 compliance. But we're going to show you how all these gauges operate today and uh, what they can do for you. We're going to go ahead and jump right into gauge number one, which is the organization gauge. Again, all accounts have that gauge. And uh, what this gauge measures is compliance with procedures that NFPA 1500 mentions in it. Um, as you can see, we if we add these two numbers up, 44 and 9, I have 44 subcategories that are unlocked, which means I'm not in compliance. And I have nine um, categories, subcategories that I am locked in, which gives me compliance. And as I lock up those categories, which are parked in the library, we can gain additional compliance. So what we'll do here is just duplicate my tab here and jump into the library on this tab and show you what we're talking about. 
and that is these 1500 categories, NFB 1500 categories displayed on the left. Let me expand that a bit. Um, now, the organization gauges capture all of them. Um, up here for your uh, procedures. What we'll do to demonstrate this is I want to go into this medical physical, which I have a number of subcategories under. And these are all mentioned in NFPA 1500, such as fire department physician documents in 10.6, fitness, fitness for duty evaluation process in 10.7 and so forth. Um, in this particular category and, and subcategory for our physician documents, we have a, a document that we have parked in here. This would be my procedure. We do not provide you the procedures. We provide you a place to park the procedures to uh, indicate you're in compliance. So when we put these in, you can see that we can upload them on a particular date, and then we will set a next review date. And once we get all that in there, what we'll do is lock up that category is represented by the lockup here. That is the uh, gray color. If it's unlocked, it'll be like the uh, unlocked one down here where it is red and unlocked. Once we're, we put the document here and lock it up with a next review date out in the future, and the concept here is that these policies will all need to be reviewed periodically. So when we get to that next review date, what will happen is this lock that is locked right here will unlock here. And if we have the lock for the category locked up because we're in compliance with everything below this in the subcategories, they will unlock and give us a visual representation that we need to take a look at these for compliance. Now, in the real world, you know, you may take a policy and uh, take a look at it and determine that you're continue to be in compliance with everything uh, with NFBA 1500 in your local policy and procedures and uh, just extend that next review date out and I'll lock it back up and everything is, is good. In other uh, times, you may have to take that document and go through a review process and update it and then park it in there, in, under the subcategory and lock it up. So what we're gonna do here is we're, we're going to go into the fitness for duty evaluation just to see, show you the mechanics of this. I'm going to add a file and I'm gonna jump out here in my system and pick a demo doc that I have and it really I'm just going to pick this engine company drill because it's readily accessible. So this would be my document that I'm parking in here. And we'll just make it a test entry and we're going to give this a next review date out in um, let's say January 1st, 20, 2020. About a, a year and a couple months from now. When I get all that information in here, I've got my document. I've named it and have a description in. My next review date is into the future. I will select done. And we'll see that we have that document parked under here with my uh, uploaded date, my next review date. And it gives me the opportunity to lock the subcategory. And when we lock that, that lock will change to the gray color and be locked up. Now, if I go back to uh, safety analytics and let me refresh my page you'll see now we're in compliance with 10 subcategories so that's how that particular gauge works with you to get your uh, documents parked in and uh, in compliance with 1500 with the visual representation of where we stand with that so when we get to that next review date it will automatically unlock and give us that uh, red lock that's unlocked as a visual clue that we need to take a look at that. Um, we can click inside these specific green bar graphs and the black one down here, and it will list the ones that we have documents in. So we just did this one here, fitness for duty, and that's a hyperlink that will take us directly to that document in the library as well. And let me close that. And if I select down here for the 43 unlocked categories, you'll see that I have quite a few of them. And that, that list actually kind of bumps up here to the top of the screen right now. And we can come down and select any of these. If we do select one of those links, it will take us directly to that subcategory where we can uh, take a look at parking the document in there. So that rounds up pretty much how gauge one operates. Uh, again, there's a total of 53 documents through NFPA 1500 for procedures that um, you need to park in there. 
we're going to bump right next door to the apparatus gauge. The apparatus gauge, as you can see, has three bars to it. We have green, red, and black. Um, what we need to look at in this particular gauge is, uh, is a couple things before we even start working on this. I am going to go to my admin module and my apparatus list. And I'm going to select one of my engine companies and edit it so I can show you this. When I come down here to the bottom, there's three fields down here that I need to uh, select. The first is I need to make sure my, my vehicle is marked in service. That's one of the uh, measurements in here, yes or no in service. Does this vehicle require NFPA compliance? And in some instances, if it's a support vehicle, a uh, maybe a prevention vehicle or something like that, you may mark it no, and it does not count for compliance on gauge number two. Of course, this is an engine company, so I'm going to mark it yes. Inspection frequency, um, in this case, it's set at monthly. You do have opportunities to select daily, weekly, monthly, or annual. Now, NFPA 1500 recommends a weekly vehicle check. And my um, advice to you and your department is that when whatever you select here, just be careful with how you select it because the system will look for that routine or advanced inspection daily if you select daily if it's looking for it weekly it wants to see one every week and if that's your procedure and you're putting them in your system and it shouldn't be a problem but just make sure you're selecting the one that meets your needs and that's the inspection frequency um, i will select save on this and we'll move on down here so again i have in total in this account seven vehicles that we have uh NFPA 1500 compliance required for. As you can see, I have five in the green bar. And how do we get a green bar here? So what we need to uh, have to match that up to get a green light for it essentially is to have the apparatus has to be in service and it has to have a routine or advanced inspection within my inspection frequency I've selected for the vehicles. And also I have to have a NFPA annual test recorded for that vehicle within the past 12 months. So there, that's two inspections that you'll really need to focus on is your routine or advanced inspection at your inspection frequency and do you have a NFPA annual test recorded as a work order in the apparatus record. And that can be a pump test, your ladder test, whatever may be appropriate for that particular vehicle. So I have five apparatus that are in service. I have two that are not, and uh, that's the red bar. It means it's in service, but it's just simply past due for an inspection or test. And the black means I have it marked out of service. So if I go to my other tab here again, and let me go to maintenance, I'm going to uh, pull an apparatus and uh, mark it out of service. So one of my engines, is um, I'll put in a work order for it. Let's see, uh, engine 201 here. If I put in a work order and mark it out of service, and I'm just going to uh, say it's a minor repair, and if I come down here and mark it out of service, and we'll request and close this, you'll see that my gauge now in safety analytics, when I refresh the page, should display one apparatus listed as out of service down here. So we uh, can see how we can mark that. Now all these light bars, just like in the organization gauge, if we select the light bar, it'll give us um, the apparatus that are out of compliance. So in this case, we have uh, T101 or XE, which it would be uh, in my verbiage, a spare engine 302, that um, are non-compliant. So if I Select that link. We will go to the apparatus page and look right at that maintenance history for this vehicle. And I can see that I am probably out of compliance in this particular case. We'll see 
So I do not have an NFPA annual test within the most recent test frequency within the last year. So in that case, what we'll do is close that up and add a maintenance record of a NFPA annual test. And let's say it's the uh, pump test. I'm simplifying the records here just so that I can uh, speed this up a bit. And we'll just jump right down here and complete it and not put any other data in and make sure we have that test in. So now we'll jump back into analytics. And now I have an additional apparatus and extra engine 302 is listed up here in compliance. That's pretty simple how that gauge works. Um, again, you have to recall that to attain compliance, it needs a uh, routine or advanced inspection within the inspection frequency you set for the vehicle in its individual record. And within the last year, you need a NFPA test record in there and it has to be marked in service. I see we have a couple questions out there. Um, I'll ask Todd or Michael, do, I, um, do we have to break um, in and answer any of those? You guys handle everything good. I think we've got all the questions so far. Um, only one I would <clears throat> highlight there is uh, Todd Russell asked about how much safety analytics cost. And just like my answer said, we don't really know. But every one of our sales reps can obviously get that that uh, price for anyone. You just reach out to your sales rep. They'd be glad to get you that price. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate it. OK, so uh, the staffing gauge. Let me uh, turn the page on my notes here. And when we're looking at the staffing, what we want to do is this this is going to interact with some data that we put into the demographics module. So I'm going to jump in demographics and go to my agency profile. And under my agency profile, I'm going to jump down to the staffing section. And if I scroll down a bit, here's what we're looking for is this field right here. So within your agency, this would be your personnel list. How many people are specifically assigned to suppression duties? And you can put people on paid on call, training staff, inspection, mechanics, volunteer, civilian, or support. And it'll give you a total number down here. In this particular case, we have 65 suppression personnel. Now, what we do then is that gauge is a measurement of how many personnel we have in the personnel list that are tied to this fit for duty field. Now, all these personnel, fit for duty, light duty, off duty, those three settings will count towards our numbers in that field. Now in my uh, demographics, you saw that we had a total of 65 personnel needed for suppression. And I have a total of 67 in this count that are either listed at full duty, light duty or off duty. Um, so that it records that. So we're good to go. We're hundred percent. Now, if you have personnel in your department that are non-combat, and this will be personnel that are 100% admin staff, that they do not respond to calls and incidents, mark them non-combat, and it excludes them from the total number of your personnel, that's going to count towards compliance in the staffing gauge. Again, this will match the um, in the fit for duty field, anyone that is listed at full duty, light duty, or off duty not the non-combat personnel for compliance here. So we're, we're positive on that. So we've got 100% mark in this particular gauge. So uh, let's move on over to medical physical. Um, what this particular gauge does is measures how many folks we have at full duty, how many folks we have that are measured at light duty, and how many we have as off duty. In my world, an off duty person would be somebody that was on injury leave that uh, couldn't work due to uh, have some type of medical issue. So we would put them on injury leave. Same thing here is off duty. So in this particular case, I only have one person marked at light duty, 66 marked at full duty, and uh, we're good to go. Now, if I mark someone in my personnel list to 
off duty, for example, and we'll save that record. We come back in and refresh the page. You'll see that we have reduced our compliance by about a percentage or so. And we do have uh, somebody marked in off duty now. And I can select their name right there and jump right to the admin module, assuming you have the, the rights for that and change them back to whatever they need to be. That is the medical physical gauge. This gauge in particular does not record any personnel that are marked in the fit for duty field as non-combat. They do not display on this gauge whatsoever. Okay, now we're going to move over to gauge number five and all accounts have this gauge as well. Um, what this gauge shows us compliance with is measurement of the acknowledgement of reading five documents and the wellness and behavior documents in the library. So let's uh, go to our other tab here. We're going to jump into the library. And what we have is you can see in behavioral health wellness programs right at the top here, four items. So that's four of those documents. And then when we come down here to occupational exposure to a typically stressful event, those are the five documents that we're discussing here. And where we attain compliance with this is in the My Profile module, which is down here. It's daily roster. Here we go. Nope, that's demographics. There we go. My Profile. I'm still not used to just uh, looking at the icons on this. But anyway, when I would come into uh, My Profile, where it says Wellness Policies, you can see this red exclamation point. That indicates I haven't completed this. When I select this, I am uh, attesting that I read and understand these various documents that we have in there. When I select the fifth one, I have the opportunity to put my password in and submit it. Now I've got a green check mark here. And if I go back to safety analytics and refresh my page, you'll see that we do have an additional person that is in compliance. The green bar in this case is indicates that the personnel have verified all five. The yellow bar means that we've uh, acknowledged and read three or four of them, and the red is that I've read zero, one, or two of those policies of the five. Now, you do have the ability, um, if we want to, on this red bar here, when I select that, you'll see that I have a list of all the personnel that haven't acknowledged that. If I select this notify all right here, what we just did is sent them a message through the message center notifying them that they need to uh, go in and read those five documents and acknowledge their uh, re reading of them. Now, I saw somebody put a uh, comment in or a question in. Um, I think it relates to that. Um, one thing I want to uh, make, make sure you're aware of in the library is that you know this is kind of like taking a horse to water, which I can do all day long, but I can't make them drink. Um, if I have a document parked in here, such as this occupational exposure to a typically stressful events, and I come in and download it to read it, and here's that doc. This doc is pretty empty, probably. It's just a um, test document I use for putting in here. This would be uh, the layout that we would use here. So since I downloaded that, what we will do in the library is through the history record that we can select, you can see when it was created, if it was ever updated, the next review date updated, and who ever downloaded this particular file. So that is one way you can check to make sure your people are just are checking on those documents and uh, reading them. But again, you know, you can take that horse to water, you just can't make them drink is how I would refer to it. But at least they're acknowledging that they read and understand the procedure. Yeah, along those same lines, Mark, uh, Michael Iberson is the one that had asked that question. And he asked if there was a way to make all the other documents to where they'd have to check them off and sign them. And unfortunately, you cannot do that. But if you look in the chat, you'll notice I put a link to a suggested feature that is already has that request as a user story. Uh, if you're interested in that, feel free to go and apply your votes to it. Awesome. Thanks, Todd. 
Thanks, Michael, for asking the question. It's actually a very great, great question um, for compliance for those five specific policies under wellness and behavior. Okay, we're going to jump down to the bottom row and uh, take a look at these five gauges. The first gauge number six is training. Training is basically designed to operate under the JPRs in the training module. And what we need to do is if you go to the top level of the uh, safety analytics, what you'll notice is in JPRs is that we have this particular one at the top where it says NFPA 1500 out next to the uh, in that row. What I'm going to do is edit this document to show you that we have a new box here within a JPR. When you're a premier safety analytics customer, you get this right here. And anytime I check that box for NFPA 1500, it means that this JPR counts towards compliance on my uh, training gauge. As you can see, I have a class template down here with a start and an end date and a few personnel that have to attain this particular class. So we'll save that. And I want to just point out to you, just for demo purposes, what I did here was set this up that I've got completion of four of my five personnel. That's why down here in my gauge, I have one JPR that's been partially completed with some personnel in it. That's my yellow one. The green one will be completed JPRs, and my black one down here is incomplete personnel for that. So what we're going to do here is go in and Take this one that is pending and we're going to complete it. You do have the ability to um, create certifications down here too into a certification area and a manually upload a file and automatically generate a file. So let's complete this here uh, JPR. So now we have in this particular case, all of our personnel have completed that. So we've got complete. Five out of five, and if we go back here and refresh the page, we should see now that we've moved that JPR up to full compliance. And you can't have multiple JPRs running at the same time. So this gauge, um, as we're at attaining compliance with that, it'll creep up, creep up, creep up, creep up. And if we have a, uh, a new JPR that we put into play, the gauge may go down a little bit, and as we attain compliance, it's going to creep up again. I think this gauge, if you're into using the JPRs, will be probably the most active in swing from one side to the other as you're uh, going through that process of identifying what trainings that you want to make required is to a JPR and uh, the progress of attaining that with your personnel. So uh, that is the training gauge. Uh, so page three of the notes. And we're going to jump over to the equipment gauge. The equipment gauge is one of the more simple gauges, but we do have a few things to talk about with it. Um, as you can see on this gauge, we've got a green bar and a black bar. So uh, what we're looking for in this particular case is any equipment that we park in some special categories in the maintenance module under our equipment page. Um, they have to have an NFPA annual test recorded within the last year. And down here below that, I've got items on my black bar that do not have an NFPA annual test within the last year of service. If I select that bar, we're going to get a list up here of which ones that are not. So what we're going to do is pick one of those out here. And uh, go right to that, but I'm going to go to it in my other tab. And go to maintenance and land on the equipment page. So when you're a safety analytics customer at the top level, you get um, some special categories. And these special categories have these shields on them. That icon indicates that that category dumps the equipment into the equipment gauge in safety analytics. All of them here except for PPE. PPE has its own gauge that we're going to talk about in a little bit. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gauges. And all this equipment that we put in here has to have an NFPA annual test within the last year to register on that gauge. 
So my piece of equipment that I am um, going to look at to do so is 8712, which happens to be a fire extinguisher. And we're going to go ahead and put in a work order and complete it out real quick. Maintenance type, I'm going to select NFPA annual test. And just march right on down the page and complete it just to save a little bit of time. Make sure my date is for today. Yep. Now my gauge should have went up by one number down here in safety analytics. So that now when I refresh this page should change to 278. And there we go right there. So that's how we attain compliance with our equipment. And within NFPA 1500, these are the categories of equipment that it re references in there that needs some type of annual test or inspection. You know, we're pretty familiar with hose test and the testing on our air packs like the flow test and so forth, um, field bench test and that. So Michael was asking a question, Todd, if I can go ahead and jump on in here. Um, how it ties in with Halligan. If you're a premier user of Halligan and you have the ability to generate work orders through Halligan, it dumps them into your ER account. You can do the uh, routine and NFPA inspections there and it will dump that data right into ER. But you have to have that premier version of Halligan to do so. so hopefully I've answered that adequately enough. Um, if you really are interested in Halligan, which has been an awesome problem, product and they keep improving it and adding features to it, um, contact your sales rep and they'll get you hooked up with a quote and uh, how we can get that accomplished for you. So uh, there we go with equipment. Um, let's go over to facilities. The facilities gauge is, is kind of unique is when you become the premier uh, safety analytics customer, um, what you'll get and you'll see in your occupancy module is a special category. I'm going to go up here to settings. And in my categories of occupancies, you'll see that I now have one called NFPA facilities. That is a safety analytics account that has those in it. And there will be a subcategory, at least there should, of a fire station. You can add additional subcategories underneath here, um, such as uh, training facilities and so forth, that you can add to your uh, NFPA facilities category. And how this will work is out in my grid, I'm going to filter it by my NFPA facilities. So I have a total one, two, three, four, five, six of these facilities with using that category and attaching it to them in the record, which would be on the info tab category and subcategory. That ties it to compliance with any uh, NFPA 1500 compliance. So what do we have to do to attain compliance with that? Let's go back to our gauges. And you can see I've got a total of six facilities that match up with the number on my grid. I have three facilities that are green, lit up with on the green bar that are in compliance. I have uh, one facility that is lit up on the yellow bar and the yellow, what that means is that we've passed an inspection on that facility within the last month. However, we passed it with comments was our inspection result. The next one down is the red bar on this particular facility. It is, uh, we've issued a correction notice for this particular facility or the facility is out of compliance with the inspection and the inspection frequency for safety analytics is one month. So what we're doing with these six buildings is each month we will have to put in an inspection record. And there's a special procedure for doing that that I'll show you in, in just a moment. So we're gonna take um, and move on down here to the, the black uh, bar graph here and uh, mention that this is an inspection result of IDLH or we have no NFPA inspections on it. And that will be in this station here that I call the big house. We're going to jump into that record. And as you can see, what we've got here is a uh, inspection that has not been completed. I'm going to just go ahead and remove that. And we're going to 
start an inspection. And we'll do it today. Inspection type. This is the important part. We want to come down here and select NFPA 1500 monthly safety inspection. That's what it ties into the uh, gauge and safety analytics. My inspection form. Um, I do have a checklist here, by the way, um, that is straight out of the book from NFPA 1500 in the annex section of NFPA 1500. There is a facility safety checklist. This particular checklist is straight out of that book. And if anyone out there is interested in getting that, um, put a note into the questions with your email address and I will make sure that we get that to you. What we'll do is uh, make your agency a friend agency of mine and we'll uh, bring it right into your account and I'll be able to do that uh, probably tomorrow or early next week for you. So uh, let's go next and we'll go and look at this inspection form. And again, this thing is broke down exactly how um, it is in NFPA 1500 with one item that I put at the top of this form is a category and a question if it passed that I can uh, go in and add remarks and pass that. And if I have any other failures, it's broken down into the different sections. And again, all this is straight out of the book and all this uses the text directly from NFPA 1500. So here's our category and what the text is, is listed right here. So it is uh, pretty nice that we did that for you and we're, we're gonna offer that to everybody for absolutely no charge. We're happy to get that to you. Okay, so we'll get our inspection done, noting uh, what we need to do. I'm going to just jump on to the next page, which is page number three. And here's a special field that we need to pay attention to in this case, because when a, you have a NFPA 1500 facility as a category, your only inspection results are these four. That you issued a correction notice, that we marked the building or facility IDLH, that we passed it or we passed it with comments. In this case, I'm going to, uh, let's say, pass it with comments in my comments would uh, just be uh, typed into my inspection notes. We'll go into the next page and uh, just to shortcut this bit, I'm not gonna send it out via email and simply authorize it by putting my password into it. And we're next and now we have that um, in compliance, removing all those overdue inspections and everything looks good here. Now, if we go back to uh, safety analytics again, we should see a change in those uh, light bars down here. So now I have one moved from the zero up to my yellow, which is passed with comments. And here's that particular record access right there. That's how the facilities works. Again, that you have to do an inspection monthly and NFPA 1500 provides you with a uh, safety checklist. And we will provide that to you if you want it. Just uh, put a note again in the uh, questions and we'll make sure you get that. The next gauge over is uh, for PPE. This gauge is kind of complex. Um, we have to do a little bit of work to set this up. And I'm going to jump into that with you to show you how this particular gauge works. And we're going to jump into the maintenance module. And you'll see up at the top of the page for a uh, full safety analytics customer, you will also have an assigned PPE button up at the top of the page. And it co corresponds with this PPE category down here. So when I select that, this is what we see. We can uh, generate a PPE set. This one here, I, I in particular called it firefighter gear issued, FF gear issued. I can generate additional sets. And this particular set, the name of it here, and you can see in this particular case, my subcategories, which items I need to issue to everybody is gloves, coat, pants, and helmets. And I know you may issue additional items. Um, however, that's what I just have set up in here to kind of keep it a little bit simpler for us. I can add a new list here and then further define additional items to put into um, that particular list. Once I have uh, generated that list, then when I select the list here, and I can have multiple lists to select from. I can add personnel to that selected list by selecting this button. So if my uh, firefighter gear issued, I can add personnel down here to that particular list that needs to uh, have this equipment assigned to them. And that would be this Alex Richmond or Redmond right down here at the bottom of the page who I just 
just added. So as you can see with these particular sets, um, we have uh, everybody's name down here. In addition to that, what this looks like if we expand these personnel, you'll see those four items listed here, what items are issued to them and the status. The status all has to be listed in service. If we list this out of service, um, there's essentially five compliance items in here. First, we have to assign the gear to them for all the subcategories. It all has to be in service. It has to have a regular inspection. The last regular inspection can be a routine or advanced inspection within the last 12 months and an NFPA listed inspection within the last 12 months. And the, the items cannot be past the replacement date that we note in the uh, record for that particular item. One other thing I want to point out to you that's extremely important for this that you'll see, I need to jump back out to my equipment grid. For all the categories of equipment down here, we can go into that category and edit the category. We can edit the name and we can edit the requirements of data in the fields. In the full safety analytics customers for PPE, you cannot edit the name. It's grayed out up here and all of the fields are required with an annual inspection frequency, the only option we have here is to require a subcategory or not, which most of the time we would generate a subcategory, so it's a good idea to require it. So uh, that's one thing you will see with the PPE category out here. So when we're adding, if I add a new piece of equipment, you'll see that every field in here has a red asterisk, which means required information. One of the important ones, obviously, down here is our estimated replacement retirement date, which NFPA says for um, purposes of turnout here, anyway, it's 10-year shelf life. So that, that's important to note with the setup of your, your uh, account for that. So let's jump back into assigned PPE. And you, you noticed probably that we had a few folks here in a that have some things out of compliance here, like um, Michael Pizzoni. Those guys from Missouri, right, Todd? They, uh, they're, they're like that a lot. And you can see, particularly here, he doesn't have a helmet or pants assigned to him, but he, uh, he does have a coat, but it does not have a last regular inspection within the frequency. And his helmet is uh, not assigned, as well as pants. And I think I had uh, this set up to look at Randy Bullock down here, where he needs some gloves assigned to him. Yeah, those Missouri guys are like that because they want you to show them all the time. Exactly. Show them. They're the show me state, right? Yep. So what I'm going to go here is I need to assign a pair of gloves. I'm going to find a pair of gloves down here and edit that gloves, and we're going to send it, assign it to my personnel, Randy Bullock. And change that and save it. So now if I go back into assign PPE, we've met one of those requirements. So if we've got the gloves in here, at least we should. Now it may take a moment for that to, to catch up with us in here. What I'm going to do is go in and uh, update this. I'm going to look on my list to see if I had a name I wrote down to uh, Second, I do not. So um, anyway, we, we will catch up with that eventually with the, the assignment of those gloves to this and uh, get those inspection dates in. So let me, maybe it was this guy. Nope, he doesn't have anything assigned to him. So Bazzoni, um, let's take this particular coat. So we're looking at coat number one, and it just does not have a last regular inspection. So if I go into equipment, And let's do coat. I did I have one in here called coat one. And we're going to go into this coat and we are going to put an routine inspection in. And we're just going to jump on down here and complete it. 
We should send him an email too, right, Todd? If you guys haven't picked up, we know Michael Bozzoni. He's actually one of our uh, part-time trainers. I so believe me, you are correct. It will send him. It'll send him a message or email yeah. something. Um, so right here, we just added that inspection in, and it put the date here, which gave us a uh, took away the warning for that coat for him. And we could go ahead and add the helmets and pants. So that's how we would attain all that compliance with the information here on that. Once we get full compliance with this, if we jump back into safety analytics and PPE, well, you'll see that we have uh, attained some different compliance. Mark, uh, Michael Iverson has another question. It's a good question and I'm not even sure I know the answer. He's asking if uh, this will also work with Halligan if they have the full version. If I'm understanding the question, if you're doing your PPE inspections in Halligan, then yes, the answer to that is yes, it will work because it will be documenting that. Yeah, correct. Thanks, Todd. Um, yeah, when you do your gear inspections and re you record them in Halligan, as long as you have it mapped and, and hooked up um, correctly, it will put the maintenance records into your ER account that will interact with this gauge. So uh, that is correct. Yeah, it will do that. And let me now with this um, the PPE gauge. One thing we want to mention, um, and Todd and I talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, what it, what happens in the case your department, um, like mine that I retired from, issues multiple turnout coats and pants and helmets and, and so forth to your folks. It's pretty simple to to take care of in here. Uh, basically, what we'd advise you to do is to create two different sets in here so that on our we have a firefighter gear issued. I would maybe uh, correct or uh, create another set, maybe one called uh, primary gear, backup gear, set one, set two, set A, set B. And then you can identify what items for that second set that they get from your list that are required for that. And then you'll just be tracking things in two different PPE set lists which will work out pretty good for you. So uh, that's the workaround for that. For uh, If you issue multiple sets of turnout gear, whether it's just uh, extra coats and pants, or if it's an extra full set, you can set that up by adding your PPE sets, add the people to them like we would otherwise, and off you go with that. So it will work out fairly well for you on that. The, the drawback of not setting up separate pets of, uh, sets if you do issue additional gear is it could give you a false positive for your personnel. Because if at least one set, if your your sets are grouped in all together, and you have at least one set that had its inspections, it will show you that that person is good when they may have a piece of one of their sets not good. All right, That's, thanks, Todd. The yeah. the important thing is to capture all of the PPE into the PPE sets so that we're providing the proper inspection and testing of them, um, and we're watching that replacement date to make sure we don't go past it. So let's go to the gauges again. And we're going to come over here to emergency operations. Okay, we have a, a couple. This is a fairly simply operating gauge is we have a couple of things that we can look at here is that we have um, some emergency op certification requirements that measure on this gauge. My green bar on this, this part of the chart um, our personnel that have completed all the emergency op certs, and there's two of them. Um, the, the yellow is the personnel that have completed one of the two. If I come down here to the red, it's personnel that haven't completed any of those certifications. And we do have some emergency ops guidelines, categories, that we measure on this particular gauge as well. That's the uh, bottom bar here. So let's go into again our my Pro profile module. And you can see down here we have an emergency ops under 1500. When I select that, we'll have these pop up here, NIMS 100 and NIMS 700. Once I have that certification and I can attest that I have that Click my password, gives me a green check mark. Go in here, we will 
note that we have 26 in full compliance. And when we refresh the page, we're going to, we should see 27 here since I just put those in for me. So that's how these uh, three top, the green, yellow, and red interact. Now the bottom one is our emergency ops subcategories in our library. Emergency ops. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See, I have uh, eight that are not in compliance. So uh, what we need to do here is let's just go into our communications SOP. And this is out of compliance because we're past that review date. And what I'm going to do is to edit this document. And we're going to go out here and grab a test document. And we're just going to put this review date out to, let's put it out into uh, May next year. We'll say done with that. When we get that done, we'll lock this up. And that should reflect a change. Down here, when I refresh the page, that should change from 8 to a 7. And there we go. So now we only have seven of them for emergency operations, SOPs or SOGs, whatever you, however you term them in your department that are uh, out of compliance. So that is a full presentation, folks. Um, if anybody else has any uh, questions, you can go ahead and post them up and we'll stand by for a few minutes. We appreciate everybody's attendance today. Mark, and, uh, there's one thing that we may want to show them. Um, and that's the resetting of the gauges for the wellness behavior. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So how do we do that? Um, what we're going to do is go to admin. And we'll go to our personnel list. And I'm going to go down to my record. And when we go to the security tab to reset these, we have to go here and we would reset the checklist and reset the checklist for the emergency ops. And then I'm gonna save the page just to make sure. And when we go back to my profile, you'll see that I now have exclamation points in here. So that, that would help us out if periodically for the, especially the wellness policies, if you want your folks to attest that they've read and understand those every year, you can go in and reset them. And then they would have to come in here and say, yeah, I've, I've done so. Thanks for uh, putting me in that direction, Todd. No and worries, Mark. Done a great job. That's the only thing that uh, I could see somebody might want to do. It looks like we have uh, um, three people that are interested in you sharing the uh, NFPA 1500 facilities inspection checklist. And we've got email addresses for all three, it looks like. Awesome. Okay, what I'll be doing, folks, is sending you an email and I will ask you to send me your agency ID number and what state you are in. Yeah, and actually, I will go through that process. Uh, if you're in Ohio, it's no big deal. I can just go in and share them with you. Um, but my, my training account, the account we're looking at right now is listed in Ohio. I may have to change the state of it if you're in a state other than Ohio. Yeah. Yep, we got a couple more. It looks like Austin Stanfill is the only one that he asked for, but he hasn't shared an email address. So Austin, if uh, you're you know, when it comes right down to it, we we already have your email address as long as it's accurate um, that you sent in for uh, signing up for the training. So we'll be able to get to it anyways. There you go. Okay. Perfect. So uh, unless anybody has any other additional questions they want to. Uh, put in, I will uh, go ahead and, and give you a, a few moments here then we'll conclude the uh, session for today. We again, thanks everybody for their attendance. We surely appreciate it. And this uh, presentation will be available on the uh, support page under webinars in, de in demand in the knowledge base, probably sometime tomorrow morning. Uh, and Shane is asking, how do you set up email notification? And Shane, I'm going to ask you an email notification for what? Or does it go directly to admins? Uh, I'm not really clear on what you're asking. Um, if you're referring to, I know we, we jumped around in the maintenance module a little bit. Um, 
in that case, the emails that pops up every time you uh, complete or you request a sign or complete a work order. What you have to do to easily send that to them is put their email in their personnel record on the uh, contacts page. If that's what you're asking about, um, Shane, if you can clarify that a little bit, um, email notification for what? Okay, when someone completes the wellness requirement, no, um, I'm not aware of that at all. You'll no. just be able to see it on the gauge. Now, when if I go back into safety analytics, um, I mean, again, it's I should have mentioned this to you, is that the personnel, in this case for the number three gauge, their names are listed right here. So these people, I selected the yellow one, so they've completed one of the two. The personnel that have completed all of them will be on the list up here at the top. And then uh, the ones that need to complete them will be down here. And I can notify them as well, just like I can with the other ones. If I select notify right now, it just sent them all a message within the message center. Um, so Is I, there a report for non-compliance? You mean as far as signing off the document, Shane? Um, Okay, so and I have to tell you, I do not believe so. I don't think there is either, but I'm looking. There, there's no reports off of the analytics. Unless Tom, if Tom's still out there, knows of one. Um, see, I, I put analytic. Yeah, there's no results for a search off the word um, analytics and Tom is acknowledging yeah he doesn't believe so either so I, I don't know of any um, that we can pull off of that um, we just basically have to go to the page and uh, look at our list of personnel and that could be problematic maybe for a, a larger department with a lot of folks in it yeah exactly Shane come down in and select the bar graph here so if I've got three people that need to get one of them here's those three names and I can notify them as well. And that notification goes out through the message center. Just like it does up here in the wellness behavior section. Good question though. Thanks, Shane. Anybody have any last minute um, questions? We'll, uh... Questions or requests for the uh, inspection form? Mark, you did a great job today. Thank you. So anybody that's asked for an inspection form, what I will do is I will go into your account and create a new form off of it and uh i will get you an email stating that i have done so so you'll know that it's in there and what you have to do is go and look that form if you need to make a modification to it add something you can do so and then just lock it up so that you can use it and again that is it's 100 percent character for character right out of nfba 1500 annex for that Okay, I don't see any more uh, questions coming in, so I'm going to call it a day, and we're going to put this one in the record books. Again, thanks, everybody, for attending, and uh, we hope to see you next time on the next Virtual Thursday training. Thanks. Yep. You all have a great day and a great weekend.